Today, New York State sues Digital Currency Group and Gemini for alleged fraud. Coinbase picks Ireland for its EU hub. And former federal prosecutor Paul Tuckman provides his legal insight on the latest in the SBF trial. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World. I'm Mackenzie Segalos. Crypto prices are mixed this morning, with Bitcoin rebounding from its losses earlier in the week. By noon Eastern, the cryptocurrency traded around $28,700. Ether, meanwhile, dipped to around $1,561. And Polygon's Matic token inched higher, around 52 cents. Okay, let's talk about the top stories. New York Attorney General Letitia James just sued both Genesis, its parent company Digital Currency Group, and Gemini. State prosecutors claim DCG and Gemini defrauded more than 230,000 investors out of $1.1 billion. They cited a failure to adequately manage exposure to FTX and claimed DCG and its subsidiaries lied to investors, created false financial documents, and withheld information from creditors. Prosecutors also accused Gemini of failing to address the risky exposure to Alameda research through its connection to Genesis. Now, Gemini did conduct risk analyses on the loan book of Genesis, which allegedly showed as much as a 60% exposure to Alameda. That allegedly pushed Gemini to revise the company's internal credit worthiness to junk without ending its significant exposure to the company. Now, DCG didn't respond to CNBC's request for comment, but Gemini said in a post, we wholly disagree with the New York AG's decision to also sue Gemini. Blaming a victim for being defrauded and lied to makes no sense, and we look forward to defending ourselves against this inconsistent position. Next, Coinbase has picked Ireland for its European hub. The crypto exchange told CNBC that it plans to be operational with its Mika license from day one, and that if and when that universal license is approved, it will use it to passport its services into Germany, France, Italy, and the Netherlands, along with other EU members. The company's chief legal officer, Paul Gural, said Mika offers a more substantial and serious approach to crypto regulation compared to the US. Now, here in the States, Coinbase is still caught up in a court battle over the SEC's lawsuit, which claims the company operated as an unregistered securities exchange. All right, let's talk about the SBF trial for our main story. The prosecution just wrapped up their arguments, and the court's now on a week-long break before the defense calls their first witness. Crypto World's Talia Kaplan spoke with former federal prosecutor Paul Tuckman at the start of the trial, and they caught up once again to discuss how the prosecution and Sam Bankman-Fried's defense are doing so far. Paul Tuckman, former federal prosecutor and current partner with Wigan and Dana, thank you very much for joining us once again on Crypto World. You're welcome. It's great to be back. So when we first spoke with you, it was just as the trial of Sam Bankman fried was kicking off. Now we're in week three. We heard some explosive testimony from those in his inner circle. And it's important to note you are not involved in the prosecution. You're not sitting in the courtroom every day. But given what you have read about the trial, how do you think it's going so far? I think it's pretty clear that so far uh, the government has successfully putting on its case. It's getting its case into evidence. Uh, there haven't been any real hiccups as far as we can tell. Um, the testimony they've wanted to put in, the witnesses they've wanted to put on, uh, they've done that successfully. That's how it's begun. How would you grade the prosecution's performance thus far? I think they would probably have to give them something uh, of an A grade somewhere uh, because of that. You know, they have um, gotten in a lot of evidence. They've managed to um, keep the cross-examination of their witnesses from being uh, very damaging and have been able to move the trial along at a decent pace. So all of those things are uh, successful uh, elements of a prosecution for them. And what about the defense? The defense has clearly had a much tougher time. Uh, I think uh, they had a tough time because from the beginning they were facing a lot of pretrial rulings that um, prevented them from doing some of the cross-examination, I think, that they would have otherwise preferred to do. Uh, I think they also have had um, some difficulty, um, for lack of a better term, roughing up the defense witnesses on cross-examination. Um, I think some of those witnesses have been uh, well prepared, as um, they often are, and they have, for example, uh, with Caroline Ellison, just as an example, um, you know, it was a there, there wasn't a whole lot of vigorous uh, or harsh cross-examination, um, perhaps because 
the defense made a strategic decision that if they had done that, um, they would uh, risk uh, causing the jury to sympathize with her um, and hold it against uh, their client, SBF, um, if they were to go after her um, in, in too aggressive a manner. When we spoke last time, you noted that you don't think Sam Bankman fried will take the stand during his trial. Did your mind change now that all this information came to the surface and we heard testimony from those in his inner circle? Based on the testimony that we've heard so far, I do think the chance is greater that he'll choose to testify. He doesn't have to make that decision until the very last minute. Um, but I do think the chance is greater because, as you pointed out, um, the defense theory so far hasn't come in uh, to evidence through the, the prosecution's witnesses, uh, through that cross-examination. So the question it really is, how is the defense going to get that story before the jury? Remember, what a defense lawyer says during opening statements is not evidence, same as the prosecution. What's only what's uh, evidence is um, the testimony of the witnesses and the exhibits that are admitted into evidence. So, uh, so far we haven't seen evidence to support the defense theory, but again, they get their opportunity uh, to put on witnesses after the prosecution. Going back to the government's star witness, Caroline Ellison, she took the stand last week and she was asked if she committed financial crimes. Without hesitation, she said yes, and then said that Sam Bankman Free directed her to commit those crimes. She also said that she, alongside SBF and other executives at FTX and Alameda, brainstormed to make balance sheets look better. What do you think about her testimony? How damning was her testimony? It was quite damning. Her testimony was very powerful, very effective, um, and exactly what I assume the prosecution wanted uh, from her testimony. Um, uh, there was, as you mentioned, um, no hesitation uh, in her about admitting that she herself had committed these crimes, which in a sense is um, sort of obvious since she's already pleaded guilty under oath to committing these crimes. But the fact that she was able to acknowledge her guilt uh, in a way that did not minimize in front of the jury what she had done, attempt to deflect the blame, even as she pointed the finger at SBF and said, he was the one who directed me to do it. Uh, that's very uh, damning to SBF and uh, very effective for the prosecution. Now this week we're hearing from Nishad Singh. He's the former head of engineering at FTX. He also pleaded guilty and is obviously cooperating with prosecutors. But when he took the stand, he immediately admitted that he, alongside SBF and other FTX and Alameda research executives, defrauded FTX customers. He also said he was concerned about the excessive spending of Sam Bankman Freed. He revealed that SBF spent more than $1 billion on celebrities and sponsorships. What's your reaction to that testimony? Well, for Mr. Singh, at least to start, um, it's not surprising that like Ms. Ellison, he began by forthrightly admitting his role in these offenses. That is a sort of a standard uh, procedure for a cooperating witness in a federal case. Some witnesses um, do it in a way that appears more credible and truthful than others. And I think part of SBF's problem is that the wit cooperating witnesses in this case so far have done it in a way that does appear credible and truthful. Um, I think that uh, the testimony that he gave, Mr. Singh gave, about um, all the expenses, uh, I don't think it's quite as, it's not as important um, as some of the other testimony from the cooperating witnesses. I believe as uh, Mark Cohen pointed out on cross-examination, it's not um, inherently, there's nothing criminal about spending company money um, to promote company business. And for things like the endorsements, that is of course what those payments were for. Uh, the judgment perhaps was poor and ill-advised, um, but that itself isn't a crime. Now, The Verge recently reported that Sam Bankman Freed's defense team is waking up. They uh, reported that on the stand, Singh condemned SBF for continuing to make venture investments despite knowing the money came from customer funds, calling the actions evil. And then later, the defense pointed out that Singh took out a loan from FTX to buy a $3.7 million home on Orcas Island in Washington after Singh said he found out about the misuse of customer funds. That's according to The Verge. What does that show you? 
Well, I think that is a, that is a fair piece of effective um, cross-examination by uh, the defense about Mr. Singh. But I uh, also think that the way Mr. Singh handled that uh, was also uh, probably effective for the prosecution. And that, again, he forthrightly admitted what he had done. He also stated, whether it was on cross-examination or redirect, that that house had been forfeited to the federal government as part of his plea agreement. And so the money would be used um, to compensate victims in the case. Uh, I think that um, part of what Mr. Singh uh, did, um, though, that, uh, you know, part of what I think that why this was so hard for the defense uh, in this case is because whatever Mr. Singh did in terms of using that money uh, that was FTX depositor money to buy that house, um, if you believe Mr. Singh, um, SBF did the exact same thing, just as much if not more, meaning using FTX depositor funds for purposes that they should not have been used, including for his personal use. And so um, really when you cross-examine uh, as a defense lawyer, when you cross-examine a cooperating witness, uh, you certainly want to bring out anything that puts them in a bad light, which I think uh, Mr. Cohen effectively did. But what you really is most important about that cross-examination is to use those questions to convince the jury not only that the witness is a bad person, but that they have an incentive to lie and they don't, shouldn't be seen as credible when they say that the person on trial committed the offense. And notwithstanding Mr. Singh uh, saying, yes, I took that money, the fact that it was the exact same activity that, that SBF was allegedly engaged in lessens um, the damage to his credibility if the jury believes that SBF has done those kinds of things as well. Okay, that's all for Crypto World today, but we will be back again tomorrow, and we'll see you then.